I think what's interesting about my father is that when he arrived in Stellenbosch, he was potentially the kind of poster boy for Afrikaner nationalism. You know, he was like blonde and blue-eyed and a great rugby player. Um, he was going to be a Dermany. And, and yet Stellenbosch was where he sort of honed his intellectual skills and ended up in the role that ultimately he played. I mean, I think it's a, a gap in knowledge if you don't know about him. He was able to see a bit further into the future. Amazing leader, bold and willing to take steps that other people weren't. I'm Tanya Slavert. I work in the business environment. I'm a director on, on several companies and I'm the daughter of Frederick van Sale Slavert. So he was my hero. I mean, he was this tall, towering, funny, sweet, gentle guy. Um, I remember lots of bear hugs for, for me and for my brother. This is Simonsbach uh, residence in Stellenbosch. It is where I spent uh, part of my early childhood. My father was the head of the residence here. And the last time I, I saw this place, um, I was five years old. So, my mother being, I'm getting quite emotional. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that was my folks' room. My mother, Mana, and my father. They were both students here at Stellenbosch. Uh, my mother's also studied sociology, and they got married here in the Mutterkerk in Stellenbosch. <laughs> my name is Jandri Depenor. I am a fifth year engineering student, doing my masters now in um, electrical engineering. And basically, it involves the design of a, of a motor generator for a wind turbine. My father stayed at Stellenbosch, so he has always had fond memories of the place. I grew up in Eisner. It was sort of a protected environment. My roots and my values come from my family, so that was a good experience. Um, but it's also been quite eye-opening to come to a place like Stellenbosch University with all its diverse interactions and engagements and ideas. What I know now, obviously, as an adult, is that he arrived in Stellenbosch, a naive student. Of course, by the time he left here, he, he was anything but that, and had become pretty vocal against apartheid and separate development. And so I think some saw him at the time as a sort of leader of the official opposition in the, as he called it, the last white parliament. Some would point to the um, dialogue or the um, encounter that he organized uh, for Afrikaner and other white intellectuals in South Africa to meet with the ANC in exile. So I think he was an independent thinker. He was a pragmatic politician. I think in this country, a, a, I think a great leader in his time. Uh, and, and I think he also, I think he inspired a lot of people. Leadership ultimately starts with yourself. Um, it's only when you develop yourself as a leader where you can contribute to the society and lead others. And I decided to engage in leadership on, on campus, starting in res, uh, being a mentor, being on the ARCO, being on the prim of Dagbrek last year. It's now that I'm a postgrad student, it's definitely still a home away from home. I have some great memories here. Every year the on prim stays here, same room. And yeah, this is where I stayed last year. Uh, we used to keep it in a bit better condition. So this... Uh, is where all the honor prims write their names. Uh, that's my name over there. <laughs> and you have the opportunity to leave a legacy or not. Uh, it's up to you. It is really valuable. Uh, I remember in my first year, my honor prim was someone I really looked up to. Um, you can learn a lot from, from people who've, who've walked the path before you. South Africa today is confronted with many of the legacies of the past. And I think in many ways, those have not been grappled with properly. I think a great deal has changed in Selavosh since I left. Um, I'm encouraged by, by some of the shifts, the degree to which there is a greater tolerance in terms of debate, of divergent views and thinking. I think there's still a way to go there. I think the Van Selslaber Institute uh, really ties into Frederick Van Selslaber's legacy in the way that they aren't afraid to engage those difficult themes and difficult conversations. He was at Stellenbosch and this is where his abilities were honed. And that's also what the short courses aim to do, develop the leader within yourself and into society and really make a difference. 
the Institute also hosts um, discourse cafes, what they call them, where they get um, prominent or interesting, sometimes controversial speakers uh, to come and address uh, the students and also to engage with them. So the conversation with Tuli Madonsela was the first conversation that we had this year. The, the best part for me was when the students got to ask questions. And the questions were close to home. It was about Fees Must Fall, uh, things that happened that were sort of controversial. And she didn't shy away from, from answering them head on. And I think that's also what people like to see at these conversations, is not shying away from real issues and engaging on them and trying to find a solution and a better way forward. I know with my father that if he had to answer the question, what does being a Māori mean to you? I, I know it would not be a simple answer. <laughs> Um, but what I can say is that I know that by the end of his time here as a student and a lecturer in the early 70s, he had a deep emotional attachment to the place, uh, had some mentors that, that, that stayed with him for life, like Dia Genaar and others, and some lifelong friendships were formed here. And of course, uh, near the end of his life, he ended up coming back here as Chancellor of the University. So, so a deep emotional attachment, certainly, to, to this place. So being a Māti, to me, means it's almost being part of a family. I look at job applications and on LinkedIn and I see, oh, this guy was at Stellenbosch University and immediately there's a connection. So being part of that family is something special and it feels like wherever you go, you'll, you'll, have, a, you'll have a home um, amongst fellow Martis. Yeah.